So I want to make this video talking about thermal mass and insulation. I get the question a lot, how can a Cobb house have such high thermal mass and such poor insulation? And there's just a big <coughs> misunderstanding here and I want to go over these two attributes. So thermal mass and insulation, these are actually two separate and independent attributes. They don't really correlate together. So that's where a lot of this misunderstanding comes from. People think that if there's a high thermal mass then it has high insulation, which is not correct. And um, I'll try to explain that a little bit more here. So Cobb by itself has an insulation value of roughly R3 for a 12 inch thick wall. And this is just kind of a, it varies, but um, some people have done tests and they've discovered it's about R3. Um, R is the measurement value for the insulation. So this R3 value here for insulation is pretty much insignificant and it won't make any real difference in temperature transfers between the inside and outside of your building. So um, knowing that, how does a Cobb house regulate the temperature inside? The regulation of temperature is pretty much all in the thermal mass. The thermal mass is like a heat battery storage. So it absorbs that sunlight and the heat of the day um, into the wall. And it actually stores it in there. So pretend that's a wall. You've got the heat, sunlight um, coming in. It, actually goes into the wall, gets stored in there, and then if it's winter time, that heat will actually re-release itself out of the wall to the inside of the building. So if you think about that, how does it stay um, cool in the summertime? So it, it actually does the opposite. So again, another cob wall here and then we have uh, summertime heat coming in it's going this is going to be determined also by the thickness of your wall but uh, just sticking with the principle here summertime heat of the day the sunlight will come absorb into the wall and then at nighttime, these temper the t outside temperature will actually drop again, and it will pull this this heat back out, sucking it back out of the wall before it gets to the inside of the building. And this is especially effective in uh, desert arid climates. Um, that's why you'll see a lot of um, earthen building in these climates, and it's just people just know this is what works there. Um, because especially in those climates, the, the nighttime temperatures drop drastically compared to the daytime temperatures, and this works really well. It applies to most any climate, though, um, just especially in those arid climates. So these principles apply to Cobb, um, but they all apply to every earthen building um, material across the board, pretty much. Cobb, adobe, rammed earth, uh, super adobe or earth bag um, maybe wattle and daub just not as much because the wattle and daub wall is much thinner and it doesn't have as much thermal mass uh, cob wall is typically 12 to 18 inches thick um, rammed earth the same you know usually very thick walls um, adobe super adobe thick walls as well so the thicker your wall is with this earthen material the higher that thermal mass is going to be.